About 23% of adults in the U.S., or more than 54 million people, have arthritis, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. What's more, the condition limits the activities of about 24 million adults. The persistent swelling, pain, and limited range of motion can make daily tasks like shopping, gardening, or walking your dog challenging. But what causes arthritis? How can you prevent it? And what can you do about it? Hello everyone, I'm Susie Lowry Hall and we're joined today with orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Brock Cummings, medical director of Enlo's Total Joint Replacement Program. We'll go over the signs of arthritis, what causes the condition and other joint pain, and how to manage the discomfort and more. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much, Dr. Cummings, for being here. Thank you for the invitation. So first and most important question, arthritis is very common. So can you just tell us what it is? Arthritis is the wearing away of the cartilage padding that coats the ends of the bones. So if you think about taking off a chicken leg or turkey leg, it has that pearly, shiny stuff on the end of the bone. That's the cartilage that wears down with arthritis, and eventually that leads to the bones grinding together, resulting in pain and stiffness. What causes arthritis? The most frequent cause of arthritis is just a, a wear and tear issue. It's called osteoarthritis, and it's, it's essentially like the brake pads on the car wearing down. The cartilage padding wears down, and it's just associated with, with the, the cartilage wearing out. There's many other kinds of arthritis. Kind of the next most common one would be rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease in which your, your body recognizes the cartilage as something foreign almost like a germ. And so your immune system attacks the cartilage and the cartilage degenerates that way rather than a wear and tear. Um, what would be the signs of arthritis? The most common um, complaint is pain. That frequently stiffness goes along with that. People start complaining that it gets harder to put their sock on or they just can't get in positions they used to. They can't cross their legs. or So pain, stiffness, um, particularly on startup, if they've been sitting for a while, getting going can be pretty rough. Who is at risk, at most risk of arthritis? Well, arthritis can attack anyone. Women seem to be affected a little bit more than men. Um, there's, there's some disease processes that can put you in more, more risk for arthritis. There also seems to be a familial connection where it seems to run in families. Um, but Nobody is free from the risk of arthritis. So is there anything you can do to prevent arthritis or is it one of those things that essentially is at some point in your life you will probably experience it? Well, there's not a whole lot that you can definitively do to prevent arthritis. Certainly taking care of yourself, remaining active, uh, maintaining an ideal body weight um, can, can help reduce the risk, um, good nutrition, but the wear and tear associated with just life's activities, that's, that's gonna happen. Um, some people just seem to have inferior cartilage to other people, and so that it results in symptomatic arthritis sooner than others. So how do we know when it's time to come see a doctor? You should see a doctor when the pain is really starting to impact your quality of life. You know, if this is a, a pain that occurs occasionally and it's a nuisance, but it doesn't really bug you and doesn't limit you from doing anything. You know, you don't necessarily need to seek medical attention at that point. But if you find your world shrinking, if you find that you're having to give up doing things that you like to do or that you want to do, or you find that you're starting to have trouble sleeping and the simple things that we talked about are not taking care of it, then that's the right time to seek medical attention. And how do we see you? How do we get to you? Um, that would be a referral from the primary care provider. Um, he or she will get an x-ray of the affected joint and see if, if what's causing the pain is appropriate for our office, and then they would refer you to us. So what does treatment look like for arthritis? Treatment for arthritis is basically at two extremes. One extreme is we do things to reduce the pain or minimize the pain that don't solve the problem. Um, those things would include various kinds of over-the-counter medications like ibuprofen or Tylenol. Um, physical therapy can be beneficial. Uh, it seems a little counterintuitive that moving the joint would be something you want to do if the joint's painful, but arthritic joints are less painful if they're worked in a low-impact way than if they're just left alone. There's also some injection options. Um, Cortisone-like injections um, can be quite helpful. There's also a, an injection for knees that is a thick jelly-like lubricant that puts a little 
um, lubrication in the joint that can be can be helpful. If those kinds of things are not are not working, then the other extreme becomes worthwhile, and that's surgery to replace the joint. And that's where you come in. That's what I do. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. So joint replacement um, is something that should be done when your when your pain is really impacting your quality of life, and those simpler measures have have failed. And the joint replacement just involves resurfacing the ends of the bones and using artificial surfaces so the bones are no longer grinding together and you've got artificial joints moving. What joints does arthritis affect most often or most common? Is there a certain type of person or is it a specific joint that it tends to affect more than others? The, the knees are traditionally more common than, than other joints. Um, you know, the, the weight-bearing joints are the, are the biggest issues. Um, in terms of joint replacements, most joint surgeons do about two-thirds of their cases as knee replacements and one-third, about, uh, about one-third of them are hip replacements. Any joint can be involved. The joint at the base of the thumb is a, is a common um, joint to be, become problematic with arthritis. Um, we just do hip and knee replacements uh, in our office. So what does the surgery look like if someone decides that they'd like to do surgery? Is, is it an overnight type of thing? Is it in and out? Can you tell us more about that? Traditionally, it's been an overnight sort of thing. When I came out of training, um, we would do the surgeries on a Monday and we were happy if people were home on Thursday or Friday. Um, over my career, that time has been reduced steadily. Um, we're now doing these surgeries in the appropriate patient as an outpatient. Um, we just recently um, did our 100th outpatient joint replacement here at Enlo. Um, and those are my happiest patients. People like not having to spend the night in the hospital and go directly home. And um, if, if their general health is such that we don't have concerns for them not spending the night um, and they've got appropriate support at home, uh, this can be done as an outpatient nowadays. Wow, that's incredible. So start in the morning and back home in the evening. Yep. Uh, the people going home the same day are typically done in the first two or three cases of the, of the morning. And they're usually leaving the hospital between two and four in the afternoon. That's great. So what does recovery look like once they go home? What does that look like for a patient? So initially they're using a walker. Um, we allow full weight bearing right out of the gate, but most people don't feel like putting all of their weight on it immediately. Um, so they're using a walker to start out with, but they can transition to a cane and then to nothing as quickly as they feel like it. The lion's share of the recovery is the first six weeks. Um, during that time, every day is better than the day before. You can do stuff today you couldn't do yesterday. By three months, you're probably 75 to 80% recovered. Uh, it takes a year to get truly as good as you're going to get. Those last nine months, though, it's hard to perceive the improvement like you were earlier on. It's kind of like watching the hour hand on the clock move. You know, there's, there's stuff happening, but it's not so dramatic as the first six weeks. Nice. Well, those are all the questions I have. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share before we sign off for today? I would say don't let arthritis control your life. Um, you know, we do have options, whether they're non-surgical or surgical. Um, arthritis pain doesn't have to ruin your quality of life or control your life. Um, so, you know, Get it checked out if it's if it's interrupting with your quality of life. Thank you so much, Dr. Cummings, for being here. And thank you all for watching. We hope you found this information helpful. If you want to hear more about life after replacement surgery, check out Enlo's new podcast, Health Matters. We placed a link to it in the comments field. And remember, being active and doing what you love shouldn't hurt. Having healthy joints can help you live a happy life. See you next time. Take care.